Hey guys, my name is Katie Ziskind. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist. I am a relationship coach and I specialize in helping distressed couples who are stuck experiencing sexual rejection and sexual frustration and intimacy issues rebuild both emotional bonding and security and sexual intimacy. You can learn more about working with me at wisdomwithinct.com. That's wisdomwithinct.com. This video today is all about sexual performance anxiety. And I just released a podcast episode on this topic as well that you can find on Spotify or Apple. It's called All Things Love and Intimacy. That is my podcast title. Um, and you can just find that episode. It's episode number 29. So sexual performance anxiety is really challenging because if you have sexual performance anxiety, you may be avoiding sex, withdrawing from your real life partner, and um, in this cycle where you're blocking your partner's initiations of intimacy. So your partner might have a higher sex drive, might want to have sex with you, might be, you know, even in an unfortunate situation, criticizing you for not wanting to have sex. And your partner is feeling unwanted, rejected sexually, and that makes them want sex even more. And you're feeling a sense of maybe inadequacy, shame, guilt, when you have sexual performance anxiety, you may be just, you know, fear, have a fear of disappointing your partner sexually. You may avoid sex altogether because you dread sex because you've quote unquote failed sexually before in the past. Maybe you weren't able to achieve an orgasm or maybe you lost your erection during sex. And so sex is now paired with an experience of inadequacy, of failure, of anxiety and there's shame and guilt associated with sex, which perpetuates this anxiety feedback loop. So there is sexual performance anxiety, you fear disappointing your partner or even fear humiliating, feeling humiliated, you avoid sex, your partner wants more sex, your relationship gets strained and distant. So we're gonna talk all about sexual performance anxiety today. And if you're stuck in this avoidance cycle of sex and your partner is really craving sex and feels like you don't have enough sex, uh, that's a great reason to work with me. Um, that's what I specialize in. So sexual performance anxiety has many pieces to it. So one piece can be pornography induced sexual performance anxiety. If you are compulsively or impulsively using pornography, um, you could be conditioning yourself to only be sexually aroused through porn. So porn is not good or bad. Porn is an erotic stimulus. However, if you are masturbating compulsively or isolating yourself and withdrawing from your relationship to watch pornography, uh, you're actually conditioning yourself to only be able to be sexually aroused from what you see in porn. So then when it comes to your real life partner, their voice, their smell, the shape of their body no longer can arouse you because you've just completely focused all of your stimulus on porn. So watching pornography in a compulsive way or for multiple hours a day um, or using pornography as your only source of sexual arousal and stimulus can actually create sexual performance anxiety. Um, so that's something really important to know. So you can pull back on your porn use if you're noticing it's creating stress, tension, and having a negative impact on your sex life. Um, another piece to sexual performance anxiety is this outcome-oriented mindset. So the moment your partner grabs your hand to hold your hand or the moment that you're making out, your brain is already on the end, which creates anxiety. So it's your brain is stuck in the future. Your brain is thinking, what if I fail? What if I can't meet my partner's expectations? You know, what if by me losing my erection, I cause more disappointment? What if I lose my erection and then I get that look of disappointment on my partner's face again? I can't be a failure again. I, I have to live up to what they want me to be. And my partner, you know, there's all of these ang anxious feelings that come up. So the moment that you're just enjoying foreplay and just getting to know each other sexually you know maybe you still have all your clothes on and you're just kissing your mind is not able to be present so i want you to take your mind off of that performance oriented uh mindset and bring it back to mindfulness so enjoy the present moment enjoy the feeling of making out with your partner 
Try to enjoy where you are in the here and now rather than having your mind be very stuck on an outcome or on the future and what that future holds. Because we don't know what the future holds. You know, sex doesn't have to be a certain way to be successful or to be pleasurable or to be enjoyable and bonding. You know, sexual activities can just be a form of playfulness for you two. You two can just be engaging in, in, in this beautiful positive feedback loop and touch can just be sensual and enjoyable but it's hard to enjoy touch and foreplay with your partner when your mind is already on the future and what you have to do to be good enough so i want you to kind of pull back and do mindfulness practices do a mindfulness meditation for 10 minutes every morning and 10 minutes every night Um, practice mindful breathing slow your mind down and bring your mind back into your body so that you can more fully enjoy that sense of playfulness and experience a sense of comfort and security and closeness and really experience desire building versus having anxiety pop in and make you feel a sense of pressure. Another piece around sexual performance anxiety is that it is a self-perpetuating cycle. So the more you experience um, quote unquote failure, you know, in the bedroom, which I want you to There's no such thing as failure in a sexual experience. You might orgasm, you might not. You might lose your erection, you might not, right? There's no failure. It's just a bonding experience, um, an emotionally bonding experience that we convey through physical touch. But it's a perpetuating cycle. So you have the fear of not performing to these unrealistic standards, um, which heighten anxiety, which then in turn leads to difficulties maintaining an erection because you're very anxious and this cycle can create a negative feedback loop so you're kind of stuck in this perpetual loop which then intensifies anxiety makes you want to avoid sex because you dread having sex because there are these feelings of inadequacy shame guilt and fear right so there is this loop so we have to kind of break that loop a little bit one way to break that loop is to communicate with your partner when you are feeling these deep core emotions. So instead of just pulling away when your partner tries to hold your hand, try to communicate, hey, I'm actually pulling my hand away because I'm feeling a little bit shy and I'm afraid of disappointing you if our touch does lead to sex. And I'm afraid of getting that look again and seeing that look on your face where you're disappointed in me. And I just feel I'm afraid to be inadequate as a sexual partner. So I just say, why try? Being vulnerable like that is risky, but it is so much more powerful when it comes to emotional bonding than just pulling away and avoiding sex. It gives your partner an understanding for your emotional experience. And your partner might even be able to say, hey, you know, and offer some comfort. Like, it's okay if you don't say hard. It's okay if you don't orgasm. I just enjoy playing. It doesn't have to lead to anything specific. It can just be really fun for us to let our erotic, pleasurable selves out and just see where it goes. And who knows, maybe from that, you know, reducing pressure mindset, your partner's compassion and empathy, maybe you guys have amazing orgasms. But it's not from a place of obligation or pressure. It's from a place of reassurance and comfort. Um, Another piece that we do need to look at when it comes to uh, sexual performance anxiety is uh, this uh, cultural and societal influence to have a hard penis. So there is so much pressure on men in particular and penis owners to have a hard penis at all times, to have a big penis, to make their penis bigger, and that having a hard penis is a you know, a sign of status, right? And so I want to kind of offer some sex education because when we grow up in a strict, religious, conservative culture, we do not get sex positive education. We often learn what we know from porn and porn is not a form of sex education. It is an erotic material, an erotic stimulus, just like an erotic audiobook or an erotic novel. So those are not educational. Oftentimes they're fantasy based. So we all have sexual fantasies, some that may come true, some that our partner can fulfill, and some that we want to keep to ourselves. And so when you are um, kind of understanding the influence of culture and social pressure on men, porn and all of these influences create unrealistic expectations of um, the male body. So it's normal for a male to maybe get a little bit hard, get a little bit soft, get a little hard, get a little bit soft during an entire sexual experience. 
as well, many women or vulva owners do not orgasm primarily through penis vagina penetration. So a lot of men think that really rough sex is the way to make a female orgasm, and it's not true. Many women orgasm from clitoral stimulation, which is um, you don't need a hard penis to do that. You know, it's liberating. It's a sense of freedom. So it's really important to think about the female orgasmic system like a, you know, a grill pan. You have to put a grill pan on the stove and have it get hot for a good 30 minutes before you can put that steak on there for it to work. If you put a grill pan on the stove, it's not hot, and you put the steak on there, it's not gonna sear the steak. It takes a good 30 minutes for that grill pan, that metal grill pan to get hot. Think of the female arousal system the same way. So we need a touching of the erogenous zones, the feet, the inner thighs, the belly, the breast, the nipples, the um, inner arms, the fingertips, the inner wrists, the scalp, the face, the lips, the neck. Right? We need all those areas touched, grazing touch, gentle touch, seductive, slow touch to build anticipation, to build the hype, to build sexual excitement. What this does is it makes the vulva area throb. There's more circulation to the clitoris. The clitoral area becomes engorged with blood. And the female body does take 45 to 90 minutes to get there. So taking the time to build that desire and then using your fingers to stimulate the clitoral area. You know, stimulating the G-spot, which is only two to three inches inside the vaginal opening. Um, using your tongue to stimulate and offer oral sex and stimulate the clitoris, right? None of these things involve a hard penis. So I want you to realize that you can be an amazing lover and amazing partner by letting go of these unrealistic portrayals of sex and these unrealistic expectations and using your hands, your tongue, your lips, hot breath, sex toys, and even your voice. Your voice is such an amazing sex toy. You, the way you talk, if you talk dirty or in a sexual erotic way to your partner, can stimulate their mind. And a female can orgasm and get very close to orgasm simply from auditory stimulation. So the sense of sound is a huge way for you to improve and increase that sexual arousal without needing a hard penis. So you don't need a hard penis. And if your penis goes soft, use a dildo on your partner, right? So I want you to take this pressure off. There is overwhelming pressure to perform and have a hard penis. And there is just no need to have a hard penis. If you have one, it's a nice little benefit, but there is no need. You can still support your partner in ex experiencing pleasure and both of your erotic selves can come out and you can take the pressure off to perform sexually in a certain way. Um, so this is a beautiful conversation um, that you can keep having with your partner. So what we wanna do is build reassurance, we wanna build playfulness, and we wanna kind of take the pressure off a certain outcome when it comes to sexual performance anxiety. One of the last pieces I will talk about is having internal balance. So having regular nutritious meals, um, having good sleep routines, um, managing your work-life balance. If you're working for over eight hours a day, 10, 12, 14 plus hours a day, that's not balanced. You're not gonna have any energy left to give to your relationship. Uh, some couples I work with work 80, 100 hour weeks and we really have to reel it in and create time for the couple bubble to flourish. Um, the couple bubble is your emotional energetic bubble around you and your partner. And it can be weak or it can be strong. And I can help you make your couple bubble stronger. Um, but we do need time together to do that. Now, another piece is getting to bed at a regular time. If you're reading your favorite mystery book till 4 a.m., that even though that's fun for you, that's gonna take away from your energetic bucket that you can bring to the relationship. Um, ha living off of caffeine, if you're over-caffeinated, if you're eating junk food, having potato chips for lunch, having a bag of candy, having lots of sweets and desserts, your energy won't be as um, fulfilled as it could be. So having a holistic lifestyle can be very beneficial. So you can bring, you know, a excited, resilient self to your romantic time together, to your erotic time and your sex life. So make sure to have nutritious meals, cut up fresh fruits, cut up vegetables, have real proteins, have whole grains, you know, real nutritious foods that 
not the powders, not the things that are fake and artificial. Just take really good care of your body and that can help you bring your best self to your sex life. If you're needing help with sexual performance anxiety and your partner is stuck in this cycle of feeling sexually rejected and wanting more sex from you and they're feeling lonely and sad and then you are stuck kind of with overwhelming anxiety around sex and you're withdrawing sexually and you're avoiding your partner sexually um, and there's just not this easy flowing energy between the two of you. You might struggle with shame and guilt around sex. I would love to support you. I work with disconnected couples and I love helping with emotional intimacy as well as sexual intimacy. So I give you a safe place to talk about your sex life, to talk about sexual fantasies, sexual urges and sexual desires, and rebuild this really important part of your relationship because physical touch helps support bonding and security in your relationship. So you can book your free phone consult to work with me. My name is Katie Ziskind over at wisdomwithinct.com. That's wisdomwithinct.com. And if you're experiencing sexual performance anxiety, you are not alone. I would love to help support you in a playful, energetic way.